new feature in Rails 72 is that your test suite will now warn you when you run a test that doesn't have assertions in it. Now, sometimes you might have tests raise errors uh, if something didn't work, like maybe you use webmock and stub HTTP requests. And if one of those doesn't get called, it will raise an error. Or if it gets called twice, it might raise an error. And that is good, but sometimes you might accidentally write a test uh, that doesn't have any assertions in it. And so it's better for us to catch those tests uh, this way. And so when you run your test suite, Rails will now tell you, hey, this test is missing assertions. It will give you the name of the test and the file location of it. So you can go address it. In our case, this test doesn't do anything. So we want to say assert not user dot new name empty string call valid. Now we might have done something like this originally when we're poking around trying to figure out, you know, what should my test do and all that. And then when you're done and you have it working, you can say, okay, let's get rid of the debug statement and uh, just save our test and move on. So you might make this mistake. I've definitely done it myself and it's helpful to catch these now because uh, Rails will tell you about it and then you can go through and say, oh yeah, we forgot our assert not valid here and we can run our test and see that it passes. And now we will get one assertion and zero failures and zero errors. So that is a small little improvement in Rails 7.2, but helpful, especially the larger your test suites get and the more complicated your test suite becomes uh, with your application. This stuff can easily be missed here and there. And so it's a, a nice warning and really great feedback for beginners who are learning to write tests in their Rails applications. And before we go, I'm gonna go look for the source code for this because I always enjoy learning how this stuff is implemented to give me ideas of what I could do to add you know, new features like this that are super simple. Um, so after teardown is a method that gets called after teardown, obviously. Um, we're overriding it in this module and then um, calling the original code. And then afterwards, just adding this if statement that says, hey, were there zero assertions and this test wasn't skipped or didn't raise an error? Then that test passed, but it didn't do anything. So we wanna raise that warning here. And that's basically it. We go, we already have the name of the test. We already have these helpers for skipped and error and assertions. Um, and so we can go ask all those things, then find the name of the test, find the method where it's defined, get the source location from Ruby, and it gives you the file name and the line number, and then raise that warning message, and that's it. Um, and if we click on the commit for this, we'll see that the majority of the code in this PR was um, in order to basically make those tests explicit. So here we have a routing constraint um, that we're testing, but it would raise an error and we would just have to assume that the test was going to know that there was an error being raised. If you read this test before, you wouldn't really know that. You'd have to kind of assume it. And so now all of the tests have an explicit assert nothing raised and the code is now inside of a block. Uh, to make sure that, hey, no, uh, no error was raised. And so that is a great little implementation that goes and makes all of the stuff a lot more clear in the test suite. In these, where it's doing two calls right in a row, this one is now explicitly the one that's being tested. We wanna make sure that that uh, second call is the one not raising an error. So I think this include, or improves the test suite a whole lot if we look through these, really everything is just updating the, um, the test suites for things, except for these two changes. So the file we just read, and then the one before it, which modifies the warn uh, method call to raise a warning error now, which is just defined here. So there's almost no changes to Rails in order to pull this off. Um, that was it, it was super clear, super clean. Really like how this worked out. Um, and it's great to see it. the implementation is so simple. You have all of these tools available already. We just haven't used them for this purpose. And then you can make your own contribution to Rails like that, um, with just a little bit of code. So that's pretty awesome. I really like how this turned out. This doesn't look to be the original implementation of it. There was some others before this, um, but this actually 
is the latest version of it. So that uh, at least gives us a place to start poking around. If you want to go through and look at the history of this file, you can. You can. Um, looks like it was just refactored a little bit afterwards. Uh, but this one here, uh, April 30th, 2024, was where it all started. So there's probably a little bit more work on this one to get it going, but um, it looks like it maybe already existed before then and just got kind of renamed. Let's see what the source code for this was. A whole lot more complicated. Um, and then it turned into this, super duper clean and simple. So yeah, pretty awesome. I love reading this stuff to see how it works. It's always surprisingly uh, more straightforward than you might expect. There's just a lot of tools inside of Rails that you can take advantage of that you may not even know exist because they're not part of the public interface. This is using internal things. So that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tests without assertions is now a really awesome feature to have in Rails to make sure we're not making um, easy to miss mistakes. So that's it, hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace.